The C300 Mark III is expected to be revealed at Canon's virtual press conference on April 20th. I have an update on the sensor and frame rates coming up. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, it's Simon from The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe and like button as it really helps support my channel. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video, they're in the description down below. Canon's going to be holding a virtual press conference on April the 20th at 1 p.m. And one hour later, Sony's going to be holding their virtual press conference. Two days ago, I mentioned this, and I went into a bit more detail about the C300, which is expected to be announced on April the 20th. It will have a new sensor developed from the ground up, and it will feature 4K video up to 120 frames per second with dual pixel autofocus. In 2K or 1080, it will be capable of up to 150 frames per second. But what does this mean for the ordinary filmmaker? Well, not much really. See, the camera is designed for television production, video professionals, where color accuracy, exposure, detail, and low light performance are important. At release, the C300 Mark II costs $16,000 for the base unit. That's a lot of money. Add in accessories and the price quickly ramps up. The EOS R5 is getting a lot of attention because it has 8K. Some viewers believe it will cannibalize the cinema line as it produces better video rates or better video. These cameras work very differently for very different use cases and deliver different capabilities. The C300 provides a much wider dynamic range over current DSLR and mirrorless hybrid cameras. The Channel Film Riot does a really good job of showing just how well the C300 performs in low light. Uh, just go to around the seven and a half minute mark. They show what it's like at 11,000 ISO outside at night. You can see there's very little noise. The R5 will not be able to achieve this low light performance. The C300 Mark II is also capable of providing 12-bit 444 internal recording. Let me say that again. 12-bit 444 internal recording. That's the Mark II. The R5 can't even touch this. The C300 is designed for high frame rate motion picture and television with high detail, shallow depth of feel, and high sensitivity to low noise. The C300, like the rest of the cinema line, is designed to run eight hours a day every day of the week. It's much more durable than hybrid cameras. Look, this doesn't mean that we can't produce great results with the R5 or other cameras like the Rebel 250, D250, the 90D, or even the EOS R. It doesn't mean that mirrorless and DSLR cameras do not have advantages. They are lightweight, capable of producing really good videos as well as photos. They're go anywhere, any place devices, and they're priced for the ordinary filmmaker. Well, maybe the R5 won't be quite priced for the ordinary filmmaker, but the rest of them will. I'm sure I'm going to be very happy with the results of the R6 when it comes out, and I could probably even settle for the 90D and be very happy. It'll be a huge upgrade over the 70D that I currently have right now. When Canon announces new cameras, or we hear fantastic rumors, it's easy to get carried away. I know I do myself. Look at some of my videos about the R5. I was a little bit excited. But the C300 is not for the ordinary filmmaker, not even one with plenty of funding. As ordinary filmmakers, the capabilities or outcomes are what matter most. It is what we want out of the camera. It's not all about low light, detail, or even resolution. The scenarios or use cases matter too. Are we doing run and gun work? Are we doing indoor work, event work, or YouTube work? It's also about weight and ease of use. While the R5 might be highly desired, take some time to chart out the capabilities that you need in your next camera. These are the capabilities that I want in my next camera. To me, detail matters an awful lot, not just in 4K, but 1080. The crop matters as well. Uh, autofocus, color accuracy. Dual SD card slots is nice, but not critical, but it's on my list. Don't make the mistake of buying something just because it's hyped up and sounds amazing. There's always something better coming out. Buy based on what you need, and you won't suffer from buyer's remorse. That's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and have yourself a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.